All my classes have assignments for the week here, and I have them rolling, uh, showing the four, uh, basically a week's worth of coming up assignments, and then um, on the side. Uh, so I don't know if any of you are using the assignment app, but that's what I'm using here. I used to hand out a sheet of paper at the beginning of the week, and now I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, there was a problem, by the way, the weekend, so the students couldn't access the assignments because this didn't appear for them uh, on Sunday, yesterday, but it's back, so not sure what's up with that. I do. Oh, you, oh, you know, okay. Um, never to happen again. Anyway, it was fine. Uh, this has past assignments. One of the glitches here, well, the reason I'm using this, because um, I know there's some people that are posting hard copies, is that I intend to reuse as much as I can next year, so the idea is that it's in the system, and then Next year, I can just change the date, and they will all reappear. I don't have to re-enter them. I can really? change them. Yeah. So I can change them. I can show you. Maybe I could go ahead and show you how I would do that. But uh, yeah, big time saver. Okay. I'll show you. I'll show you how I'm doing that. By the way, just make me shut up because I'm not timing myself. I'm doing this. But, <laughs> well, <you're> done. <laughs> uh, so I can go and see what Latin. Or Pinsa. Uh, so these are the assignments. These are all the old assignments that have been deactivated. Um, and so they're not visible anymore. These are the visible ones that are active. Um, to deactivate them, I just click on them. One thing I don't like about this is it doesn't automatically deactivate. I can't say deactivate after a week, mm -hmm. like the a week after the due date. Yeah, so it's kind of a pain I have to go through because I'll start building up on the web page and I'll have to go through and deactivate the latest few. It is something that we've asked school wires to do. Yes. Well, one reason we're good at sending you feedback and suggestions, so I'd send them off to school wires. But so if I were to do this uh, this assignment next year, I just click on it and I would just change the dates oh, here, oh. and then I'd do uh, activate and whatever save, and it would there it would be for next year. So I'm hoping to I'm hoping that we keep this. <laughs> what I'm going to focus on is the visible stuff, not the under the hood stuff. And if you um, want, you can always ask me later, send me an email, come, come find me, or we might have time for questions later. What I'm going to focus on is primarily English 1, which is the uh, course that we teach to freshmen, to all freshmen. And um, I'll show you a couple of neat things that I've done in uh, and went for if I have time uh, in a couple minutes. So. English one is a, um, a, a group taught, a team taught class, which means that Kate and Malika, and Natasha and I each have different sections and you can see them here on the side, different blocks. And that means that when we um, had our website designed, it was only designed by section A through, A through G. Because it's a team taught class, we like to stay together as a team. We like the class, all the classes to be organized and do, um, do the same things, keep up with each other which means we had to create several new pages. So I'm going to start by, sh by showing you the general page that we created. We'll get back to those other ones we're already on. Uh, we'll get back to those section pages. So the general page we decided to use uh, just to basically on the right side include links, which, which show up on the Navigator too, but if you guys have probably noticed, students often have trouble finding links to their, to their course pages, to email, various things. So we figured the more the better, so we included all these, all these useful links on the side. The color coding is one other thing you'll notice. It's not exactly coding, I should say, but just the variation in color is something that helps distinguish all the websites from each other because inherently they all look the same, and that can be just boring or confusing for the kids because there's no distinction. So we we mix it up a little bit as much as we could. As you can see, we don't make many announcements, but the, but the possibility is there. And that and one thing I'm going to say, like I said, I'm not going to necessarily go into the under the hood stuff, but I will mention app names. And a lot of that is about trial and error. So don't necessarily, uh, if you want, you definitely jot down the, the, the app that I found that worked. But my point is I had to try several in, in a few cases before I found the right one for the right um, manifestation on the page. So here we have uh, just an announcements app. Um, we also have a links library for these useful links that we've included. And then useful habits, just general useful habits to acquire is a blog app. And we found that a blog for this one, where we wanted to write longer text um, instead of linking to things was the, was the most convenient way to go. So like I said, sometimes it's a blog, sometimes it's a link library, sometimes it's a file library, and you're not going to find out until you really play with it a little bit. 
Um, one other thing I want to mention here, we have a link to the calendar page. And I can click that link, or I can click the one that comes on the side. When you create a new page, you can organize them on the under, oops, that's not the right one. Um, mm -hmm. no, you can organize them in the under the hood section on the site manager. And depending on how you organize them, they'll show up in a certain order here. Uh, the calendar page is just this another little tricky thing about school wires. I would suggest creating a, a new separate page for a calendar if you want to have one, and then linking to it, because as you can see, it takes up the entire space of the page. Mm -hmm. And if you, you, you try to fit it onto, onto even the wide column that comes on, on some of the layouts, it doesn't fit, and it's just one of those little quirks that you have to get used to. All right, so we use the pages for various things, and that was a pretty basic overview of the general page is where we say that the kids can get all the information that apply to all the classes. But primarily, you'll notice there were no assignments on there. We came up with this idea for unit pages for our assignments. So the first book that we read was called The Book Thief. That was their summer reading. This page, the most important thing, this is where they go for assignments. So this is an assignments app. Andre had some of those as well. And this is a reading list app. Or not, I mean, this is reading list. The name of the app is file library, I think. Um, but they can click on this, and it's going to pop up in a new, in a new page, and there's their reading. It's, it's the place that we insist that they go. We, well, we tell them, if you have questions, this is where you go. We're not going to tell you your homework every day. And most of them have gotten used to that idea. So again, the unit page is the centralized source of assignments and readings. And videos, you know, if I were to play this, I actually had to embed this myself. There's no video app. Um, same thing goes for photos. This isn't the photo app, this is a flex in there. The reason is that um, the photo app inherently requires Flash to show photos. If you've read the Steve Jobs autobiography, or biography, if you know about Apple, there is no Flash on iPads. So um, it was useless for photos with the new technology that we have. This, this is just uh, a flex editor with photos pasted in. All right. I'm just going to. One other page that we added was sentence study that, you know, it's grammar that all freshmen do. And um, just a couple cool things here. Um, vod this, this is a vodcast that Kate created. I'm not going to click on it, but it just explains to them how to mark up sentence study. For instance, um, this sentence study samples is a discussion app, actually. And, oops. and did I? But I do like this notion of, in particular, sort of logging the work they've done so that next year um, I have this slew of student examples to show them immediately. And I just, in carpool this morning, um, was given the idea of making separate pages for each kind of unit. Um, and so I do, I sort of, I do really appreciate this feature so that mm -hmm. students more fully get to see what their peers are doing. Um, and it really kind of varies by, um, by class and by level how, it, how I'm using the web page. Um, I do a lot of sort of, or I've started to do a lot of um, tech tutorials here. And this was before Offy made me or helped me realize that I could just take a video of my screen using QuickTime and I didn't need to use Jing and then need some other special device. But so this is my actual desktop and I'm giving a, a Photoshop tutorial that is unbelievably helpful for me because no matter how often you teach something to a student, the next time they need the same skill, they forget it. Um, and like everybody else, I am making use of the assignments page and sort of the, the place for downloads and, and giving them <coughs> to go with their iPads, having a, a really different way to do that opening project um, presentation, which is where, where I'm less guided practice in the classroom and more looking at artwork. And now all of a sudden they're looking at stuff and zooming in on their page, on their iPad, as opposed to looking at a screen smaller than this from far away, and not really getting to see the image. Um, in my... Um, portfolio class, something that I've added that has been really, like for my portfolio class, it's a completely individuated curriculum. Every single student is doing something that 
they and I and Eric have sort of come up with for them. And they've got interim critiques and deadlines, but not you have to be totally done with your project by then. It's a, a very sort of self-exploratory process. And so what I end up putting on the website is really different than in my art history class, which I will touch fleetingly in a moment. But so when I find um, artists, musicians, videos in particular, I think that our kids really connect to the video because they can sort of sit and watch. I find that they have more information to give me after watching a video than after doing reading. Um, and so I like sort of bringing in what artists or people who are sort of making it happen for themselves have to say about the creative practice. I also, it allows me, um, I just took screenshots of my students' um, sort of senior portfolio web pages and then put a link to their websites so that again they have access to one another. Um, and I'm a really big fan of the screenshot because it makes everything happen really quickly for me to get onto the web page, but and let's just fess up to my flaws. Here we go. Um, I'm still having trouble um, getting the, you know, making sure my sort of settings are all correct. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. Um, and our history, I would say, is actually the place where I'm using the website daily. Um, I currently using both drop, putting the same information on Dropbox as on the website in terms of um, a sign, like my syllabus is not only here, but it's also on the Dropbox and it changes every week and I like it being here because it allows me to, oh, <laughs> there I am. Um, it'll, <laughs> it allows me um, to save it. What I love about the website is that we can, everything sort of ends up getting saved. And then also like my class today, we watched these two videos and then talked about the, all of the issues I brought up, while also I'm using my announcements sort of, you wouldn't believe how, I don't know, maybe you history teachers would, how challenging it is for kids to get their heads around dates. So I started actually using my announcements to remind them when we're looking at a block of time, what all the in sort of individual blocks of time are. The end. So if you look, even you can even see it over here um, on my world or U.S. sites. There's a little plus. So let's see. So like, um, this is the song that makes Dennis Shannon want to kill someone. Um, <laughs> it's actually um, Shashi put it on the, on there and now can't take it off. I, I actually had to entirely reload my own U.S. picture stream because I had uh, Neil Young to keep on rocking in the free world come up every single time U.S. history came on and I mean I like Neil Young but not that much um, so I had to actually reload all the pictures so that's theoretically going to happen. So don't happen. Uh, add music is that your Yeah my advice is don't add music to your photo scroll. See that's and I thought advice. I was just lazy. Piece of advice number one <laughs> is don't add music to your photo scroll. Okay so you can see here like United States History C if you click on it um, this is this is uh, all of the other embedded pages, right? So my photo scroll now is just a bunch of propaganda, but without music. But then the part over here, I think, is the really significant part because these all click through to separate pages. So this is pretty much the whole site. I had a few other things that I added on that I've actually since moved away from. I'm using a Ning uh, for uh, class discussion. I found the um, what I understood the the forum and blog apps. Um, on the website to be really limited in terms of the kids being able to post stuff and comment. So I just went ahead and, and built a name. So basically, I don't use anything below right here, and all the action is over here on the right. All of these click through. So like my videos, for instance, actually clicks through a separate videos page, and then each section of videos then has its own page, um, and then I can just embed a bunch of stuff. Now this one so far only has videos that I've made or videos that I've gotten off the internet. So this is one that I made. Um, using QuickTime, and this is one I got off of the World Wide Web. Um, but if you look back at um, the videos page, I can also see that eventually the kids will make their own videos, and I sort of upload the 
the highlights of the kid videos. So going to revolutionary videos, you can see there's a couple by me, but there's also Olivia Durant made a good one, Aaron Ball made a good one, this Cooper video one is absolutely spectacular. So again, these are all um, sort of separated out by subject, and it prevents it from being one giant, super long uh, uh, list, and then everything is, is sort of a little more organized. So that's really, I guess, the thing that I'm doing that's different. I mean, Allison and I are both doing screen capturing and videoing ourselves. Like, I video myself lecturing. I video myself talking over PowerPoints. Then I take videos off the web, and I have the kids make videos. So between all of these different uh, multimedia uh, um, options, I'm building up a video library that I will have forever. And it's organized in a way that's not super cumbersome. It's kind of off to the side. Everything else you can see is pretty self-explanatory. Maybe the only other interesting thing is my vocabulary is actually also just links. And every single one of these is a separate Google Doc. So the kids can then link straight to Google. And then the kids can um, contribute to the definitions of the vocabulary words in Google um, rather than uh, through the website. So I'm actually, in all everything that I do on the website, literally, it's all just link library file library, or flex editor. That's it. Um, but I can do all of uh, all this stuff.